Well, hello everyone. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Haley Victory Smith and I am a breaking news reporter for the Washington Examiner. On Sunday evening, which was Monday afternoon, Hong Kong time, uh, I got the chance to speak with Joshua Wong, who has become sort of the de facto leader of the Hong Kong protest movement. We sat down and, and discussed many different topics. And I had originally recorded a different intro for this interview, uh, but in light of events that have happened over the past couple days, uh, I thought it would be important to record a new intro to sort of update you and put the interview in context. So a couple days ago, or I believe yesterday, uh, Joshua Wong was disqualified from running for the Hong Kong Legislative Council, which is Hong Kong's governing body. He had said a couple of weeks ago that he was going to run for this council. They've said that he was not sufficiently sort of supportive of the new Hong Kong national security law, which if you know, is a new law from China that has been used to crack down on dissidents within the city. Uh, 11 other activists were disqualified as well. Now, uh, news breaking on Friday is that Hong Kong has decided to delay the Hong Kong Legislative Council election by a year, although they haven't set an exact date for that. Uh, and they're citing concerns about the coronavirus. Now, uh, Joshua Wong and his fellow activists are skeptical of this reasoning. Uh, and they believe that they are being denied their right to sort of change the momentum of this council. Uh, so this is our interview that took place on Sunday evening. So, so you know these things have happened since then. Um, we felt like the interview was very educational and helpful, so we hope that you feel this, feel that way as well. There are a couple places we apologize in advance where Joshua had to step away for a couple of seconds, and so um, we had to splice the video in kind of an awkward way, so we apologize for that. Uh, but we hope you find this interview as helpful as we did. Thanks so much. Joshua, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's really a privilege to be able to sit down with you and you know, hear about your experience. Um, to get just right into it, the first question I wanted to ask you is just sort of about um, your personal safety. I know you told BBC a few days ago um, that you felt like you were potentially being followed. Uh, do you still feel that that's the case um, or, or, or has that stopped? Uh, with the threat of being stalked by a known private car being traced by some of the pro Beijing agent, agent. how uh, the authorities put my life in risk is crystal clear. Um, when you say that, when you said probation, uh, can you clarify what you're referring to? Are you referring to Hong Kong police or is it just kind of unclear who might be following uh, you? Unclear authorities. I think that's in risk. Say that one more time. Um, I think which is hard for us to verify, but no doubt at all how probation can just put our life in risk. Right. Um, I guess my follow up question to that would be, um, have you been in any way since the implementation of this new law? Have you been contacted by Chinese authorities or by the Hong Kong police to notify you that what you've been doing is in violation uh, of the, the law? With, uh, with the risk generated by Beijing, that's lots of uncertainty, but we still need to keep on the fight. Right. Have you been contacted at all by them, though, or have you not heard from them yet? You heard personally. From, oh, sorry? You personally, have you been contacted by the authorities since the implementation of the law to let you know that what you're doing is in violation no. of it. No. Okay. Um, what are you seeing on the ground? We've heard some reports about, you know, obviously because this law is written so vaguely, um, we've seen lots of different reporting about, you know, it, it's sort of like how this law is going to be implemented is sort of revealing itself um, as time goes by um, because it wasn't clear when the law was originally published. So what are you seeing on the ground as far as the types of offenses that are being, um, that people are being arrested for under this law? 
uh, with the risk of being extradited to China to face the prosecution, with the uncertainty to be sent to black jail in Beijing, and with those possibility of the life sentence, I think the tremendous threats that we face is we never imagined in a previous day. What types of um, I guess my question more specifically would be, I, I know there have been people that have been arrested so far um, for, you know, like holding a Hong Kong independence flag. And I know you guys, um, the pro-democracy uh, coalition was told that their primary uh, was considered to be, you know, nakedly illegal behavior under the law. Uh, are you seeing any other types of offenses that are being, um, you know, sort of targeted based okay. on this law? Uh, what I mean is with more than uh, with more than uh, almost 10,000 people were arrested since last summer and uh, more than 1,600 of them were prosecuted and uh, what we experienced is we already have Hong Kong is being prosecuted by the national security law. That's the things that we never experienced in the past. Do you have any idea of how many people have been arrested since the law was implemented a few weeks ago? Uh, uh, I think that's the information that we are also asking from Beijing. Okay. Um, you are now running uh, to have a seat in the Hong Kong Legislative Council. Um, you've, I hear you've been contacted, I saw your post on Twitter that you've been contacted by sort of what might be considered the Hong Kong electoral authorities. Um, can you explain to our audience kind of what that um, what that means and and sort of what is is there a threat that's being presented to you being able to run for office uh with the track record of being disqualified by beijing uh i think now it's really terrible for beijing put our life in risk and also try to censure us out from the ballot so how Beijing is not only try to cancel uh, to disqualify specific candidate, they even hope uh, to try their best to cancel the whole election. What do you mean by that? Cancel the whole election? Do you think that's going to happen? Do you think that's a significant possibility? Uh, 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 Beijing and they are still figuring, trying to figure it out. Okay. So you haven't, there's no official word on that yet, um, but you think that's a possibility. Um, you stepped down from uh, the student group Demosisto, um, and that group has since dissolved. Did you, what was, what was your reason for doing that? You're still continuing sort of your public facing activism. Um, so wh why did you step down from Demosisto and yet still continue to pursue, um, pursue I don't activism? To, I don't want to put the life of my friend and colleague and teammate in risk, but I still need to continue to fight for freedom. Okay. So it was kind of a choice to do this more so on a personal level than as an organization. Yeah. Okay. Um, what would you be asking other countries to do? I think the big question that I would have is, do you feel like the UK is upholding their end of the bargain um, to the people of Hong Kong? Um, you know, obviously they made this promise back in 1997 that Hong Kong would be able to maintain a certain amount of autonomy for 50 years. Um, do you feel like the UK is doing enough or do you feel like there's more that they should be doing? It's now Beijing who broke the promise uh, in the sino British One Declaration. And for how UK government provide the lifeboats for Hong Kong people, it's a good move. But later on, how can we also encourage the world to stand with Hong Kong, which is really important. How do you think, um, what do you think other countries should be doing? Uh, I think how they could reassess their foreign policy to Hong Kong and China is really critical right now. Are there specific steps that you think the United States or or Britain or other countries could be taking to support the people of Hong Kong? 
uh, different country might have different diplomatic concern, and I think the consideration of UK and US might be totally different. So I think now it's at least start to enhance the reassessment is really important. Yeah. Um, do you th- what it, would you say is if you got to decide of all the protesters in Hong Kong what your main objective was? Um, what you would like to see happen in Hong Kong? What would you What would you say that is? Do you think that um, you know it's a possibility that China reverses course on this and and revokes the law? Um, what do you think? I mean, is realistic? And what are you hoping to accomplish? Uh, stop the political prosecution is really matter, and now is the time to deescalate. Uh, the police brutality. Otherwise, they will just enhance more and more confrontation and discontent from the people. I see what you mean. Um, What would you say to people like me as an individual um, or people who might be watching this? What would you say to just an individual person that they can do to be helping the people of Hong Kong? Is it just sharing your stories on social media? Um, Are there more specific action steps that you would direct people to? What would be your recommendation on that? Uh, Follow our Twitter, encourage your lawmaker and government official to pay my attention to Hong Kong. It's really critical right now. Mm -hmm. Based on what's happening in Hong Kong, Do you think there are any implications for the people of Taiwan? What what do you think those implications are? Uh, Today, Hong Kong, the next is Taiwan, and later on is the rest of the world. All right. Well, with that, on that cheery note, (laughs) um, Joshua, we will let you go. Thank you so much. Um, again, for agreeing to sit down with us. This has been really great. So thank you and please stay safe and and keep us updated. We want to continue to hear from you.